Hey guys, this is Fleming. Welcome back to part 3 of 3 of our interview with Jorge. So Jorge is the number one ranked player in Clash of Clans currently. So we've got some interesting things we're going to talk about in this uh, part 3 of this interview. Jorge, what are we going to talk about? Hey guys, this is Jorge again. Um, thanks for listening to part 1 and part 2. Um, in part 3, we're going to be discussing uh, future updates, any uh, suggestions that I may have for future updates as well, and as well as my future plans once I reach my 4,000 goal. Do you have any advice for new players and upcoming players? Yeah, um, focus on your clan. Um, choose your clan wisely, make sure that you enjoy the clan, and make sure that you have fun, for, uh, first and foremost. Um, I mean, this, you know, at the end of the day, this is a game and, you know, the whole point is to meet people and to have fun. So if you're not having fun, that's then some, you're, you're not playing. <laughs> that's some great advice right there. And I think everyone should definitely keep that close to their heart. Now, for advice for people who may be looking at the top, well, top of the leaderboards as well, rather than just maybe your average, everyday social player who hops on for a few hours. Well, not a few hours, a few minutes every day. Uh, people who are looking at the top of leaderboards, what sort of advice will you give them? Um, be able to <laughs> basically be an insomniac. <laughs> you lo- <laughs> you need to be on a lot online a lot to be able to maintain or even compete at the level um, that the high cups are, the top players. Um, I don't know what the average hours per week is, but I, if you did a study, it would be staggering. <laughs> Uh, sort of give me a ballpark. So just just put this in, this in perspective. This week I pulled three forty eight hours just sessions. Um, so that's forty eight at forty eight hours straight of playing three times this week. So um, that's six days. Correct. Out of seven days. Correct. That you've played straight. Correct. That doesn't leave much time for sleeping. Nope. Wow. Just yeah. wow. But again, like I said, the, my real life job actually helps me out in this aspect because I'm used to 60 to 70 hour work weeks. So I'm working while I'm playing. So it doesn't feel as if I'm, you know, 100% focused on this game for 48 hours straight. Yeah, Otherwise, it would, I would go crazy. <laughs> the mesh is very well. Right. Exactly. Okay. Then so, uh, a little bit of uh, your thoughts on the future of the game and updates in general. What would you like to see and what do you think should change for at least the high-level players? Um, so lately um, from the update, I've seen a lot of players just go more towards farming and, you know, I don't blame them and simply because of the cost. Now, with every new update, things are going to get more and more expensive. So, you know, any suggestions on my end would be to make the game more defense-oriented because obviously uh, attacking at our level is costly uh, monetarily, and um, I can understand why lower players feel like they can never get high enough because you can't win on defense. It's just not possible. So, you know, in terms of future updates, I hope they add, you know, more defense-oriented, um, you know, units or buildings so what do you think the possibility of them doing sort of like randomness added in so the game changes? So maybe like this week Barbarians do 10% more damage. Just sort of things just sort of mix it up so it's not quite so uh, so stale in the same week after week. Yeah, I mean that would uh, that would be interesting because then it wouldn't be verbatim in terms of your attack strategy. You would have to constantly tweak your attack strategy every single week based off of what the caveat is. So... That would be inter- that would be an interesting update, and I would be interested to see how that would fit in. And uh, uh, probably not even your attack strategy, but as well as your defense, because I can just imagine. Uh, oh yeah! Well, suddenly, everyone's using barbarians. Well, you're probably going to want to place your mortars and wizard towers a lot more carefully, but probably don't have to worry about your air defense ones quite as much. Exactly. So, I mean, on both ends, it it helps out. So, I mean, I I think it's a great idea um, to have some variance in the game. Because that was just an example, by the way, everyone. I haven't really thought about what that <laughs> to the numbers. Right. But no, I mean, you bring up a very good point because uh, I use the same exact attack strategy over and over again, and quite frankly, um, it gets boring. <laughs> It would be very interesting to see if uh, suddenly barbarians were harder hitting, or maybe our archers had uh, longer bows to hit from farther away. Yeah, it would be interesting to see. 
Okay, then. So uh, why don't you talk about your plans in the future? So very clearly you're working on uh, 4,000 trophies right here, and uh, as we've heard, you're getting pretty close relatively. Right, 45 cups away as we speak. Um, so, yeah, my goal is to hit 4,000 cups. Uh, once I hit that mark, I'm basically taking a step back from the game and actually enjoy trying to enjoy the game more. Um, and just to elaborate on that, you know, as I discussed earlier, when you're constantly searching for a match and it's one per hour, it's quite boring. Now, when I'm playing um, with my friend or, like, uh, on my friend's account who um, recently just started up, you know, it, you see the difference where you click search and a battle comes up instantaneously. You click next, instantaneous battle. Now, that's so much more fun than just sitting here watching a screensaver all day. So I'm actually excited to be able to drop back a little bit, have some fun, um, you know, visit some clans, talk to some people, and not really be as competitive. Um, I just, you know, have invested so much that I I want that 4,000 mark. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, I'm the closest one to be able to get it, so I might as well follow through. Well, best of luck completing that one. Uh, put your name on that 4,000 mark and never let it go. I appreciate it. Thank you. So I've got a couple of questions before we wrap up here. So first sure. off from uh, Childish, what is the most overlooked concept of high-level attack or defense that has allowed you to climb so high in the trophy count? To be honest, I, I haven't really come across anything that's overlooked because, you know, any time that a base is created or a layout is created, we you, people copy. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So your defense, you're constantly changing your layout because as soon as someone copies and someone gets attacked, everyone knows the weaknesses. So you need to constantly recycle new bases and, and try out new bases. Um, so that's one thing that people don't realize also too is, you know, you may not necessarily want to copy the number one player's base or my base or number two player's base or number three player's base. Because if you think about it, we're rarely going on defense. We're playing so many hours that we don't really need to focus on creating all these, you know, unique bases or, and so on and so forth. So, you know, some of the best bases that are out there are actually not the top level players, but more so, you know, the mid level three, you know, 3,000, 200, 100, 3,000, those people who, who actually do play defense and are less focused on offense, but are still able to maintain, you know, a decent cup, cup level. Very interesting. Who would have thought that copying from the best players might not actually be the best strategy? Nope. One more question. This one's from myself. Uh, for you as a top ranked player, what are the sort of trophy ranges that you're finding? So what I mean by this is, uh, you're obviously number one right now. How right. low trophy counts can you find? So recently I've been noticing that I've only been able to hit anyone on the top player list. So I forget what is the lowest on the top player list, but I believe, um, just from an estimate, I think the range is around 600, 650 cups. That's really interesting. I can pull up the top list right now, and we can see what it's at. So you're currently at 39.56. Is that one more than you said? Uh, I believe so. Congratulations Maybe. on your uh, new achievement. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually in an attack right now, too, so hopefully this one goes well. It's funny, it's because it's the same person that I uh, fell asleep on last time. That person. <laughs> yeah, my friend. All right, 56. Percent and I'm out. Eleven drags for lightning. Okay, so I just pulled up the top players, and the bottom one is three, three, four, one trophies right now. So that's uh, just above six hundred away from you. Right. So that's generally the ballpark of where I would be in terms of my minimum range that I would be able to find. I'd be very curious if uh, the rest of us have the same sort of six hundred trophy limit because uh, that's a pretty wide range if you think about it. Because like. I'm currently at 1,500. That means I could potentially find people who are 2,100 and 900. I'm sure right. it won't happen very much because it puts people who are closer trophy counts more often, but uh, right. that's pretty wide. Right. And like I said, I, yeah, I don't know the exact logic. Maybe they have different logic depending on your cup level. But I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't find hay attacks if it was like a 200 range. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be one person for you right now. Exactly. And 
you know, one per hour right now at 600 range is bad enough. <laughs> you think that needs to be increased, actually? Um, no, I actually don't think so, because I believe that it should be this hard to be number one or to make a benchmark of this nature. Um, this isn't something where, you know, it should be easy to get. Um, so, and it's only, you know, one person out of the whole Clash of Clan community. So, you know, to make some change for just the top player, I don't think it's needed. Um, anyone who makes it or, or, you know, puts in the time to, to actually reach this kind of goal, you know, I believe deserves it. So. And that sort of goes back to the point of the amount of time you're investing. I mean, I think all of us can like sit down here at 1,500 trophies and say, Oh, they're just paying money to get that high. But in reality, you're working. You're working right. with time, not money. Exactly. I'm sure you guess you're using both, but wow. Yes. Okay. Beyond that, um, I did think of one more question. I know I said I had one last one, but uh, sure. so you've sure. mentioned uh, in this cheap shield process, you're attacking your friends. How does that sort of dynamic work out? So the going back to the cheap shield, attacking your friends, they actually appreciate and and like the fact. Now, obviously, you know you have to take it with a grain of salt, and there is a caveat to it. It only works if you have someone in your clan who's really high cup level compared to the rest of your clan. Otherwise, um, you would be losing cups through this whole process. Now, when you're attacking someone in your own clan from a different clan, you're only taking, you know, maybe one or two cups, you know, max two cups, but typically one um, from them and giving them a 12-hour shield, essentially. So the trade-off is, you know, I lose one cup for 12-hour shield or I'll take the risk of someone else potentially getting two stars or three stars and taking 30 cups, 40 cups from me and getting the same 12-hour shield. So that's where the concept of cheap shield comes in, where attacking your own clan mates sometimes is actually beneficial. So it's a, oh, my high-level clan mate attacked me? Thank God they attacked me. Exactly. That's a certainly different way to look at it from what I'm used to. Right. Okay, then. That's going to wrap up this video. So if anyone watching this has any uh, questions for Jorge, leave your questions in the comment section below, and uh, we'll hopefully can produce another one in the near future and answer them. Maybe we'll have reached 4,000 well, by then. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Um, Jorge, do you have any uh, last words of advice or anything you want to say to uh, Clash of Clans community? Uh, nothing on my end. Just uh, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad to uh, give our perspective in terms of you know high level gameplay. As I know there, you guys have a lot of questions in terms of you know what are the differences. So I'm glad that you know I'm taking part in this uh, this interview. You know, I've learned so much. Uh, I mean, I knew I'd learn a lot if I ever talked to someone who's a high level, but I've learned way more than I was even thinking about uh, cheap shields, these uh, revenging, uh, what do you call it, revenge what? Uh, revenge stalking. <laughs> revenge stalking, that's right. Such as a different concept uh, than what I'm used to, as well as clan hopping and everything. So thank you very, very much. Do you have any uh, last shout-outs you'd like to give? Um, obviously, uh, my first and foremost clan, North 44, um, always and forever. I will live and die in North 44. Uh, the leader of North 44, Levesters, um, thank you for letting me, you know, progress through the clan. Um, as I stated before, I was, I entered the clan, one of the lowest members and worked my way up. Um, everyone else in North 44, obviously. Uh, clan Holland for letting me attack from their clan, helping me out. Um, and a few members from Clan Awakening, Tina, Crystal, Riva, um, all good friends of mine. So. Sounds awesome. Once again, huge thank you, Jorge, for uh, visiting and speaking with us and uh, enlightening all of us to what the high-level atmosphere is really like. No problem. Glad to be here. Okay, everyone, so that's going to wrap up this episode. Hope you enjoyed both of these uh, interviews with Jorge, and hope you learned as much as I did. Certainly it's been fascinating. As I said, leave any comments and questions you have down in the comments section, and uh, hopefully we'll get to them in a new video soon. If you want to see that, be sure to subscribe, and beyond that, everyone... Have a great day.